Hi guys, I'm Lena. Welcome to my all analog photography channel. As you might know, I have a beautiful darkroom in Florence, but right now it's Corona time and I'm stuck in Berlin where I decided to set up a new darkroom, but I didn't have the luxurious setting of the one I have back in Italy. I have just a corner in the storage room, but I thought that it would be actually a nice challenge and a little bit refreshing to have something that most people actually have. And most are struggling to find a way to set up a darkroom and are wondering how to do it. And I have so many questions in my messages, how to set up a darkroom from zero. So today that's what we're gonna do with you together. So this is the basic, basic, most basic darkroom setup. And the main thing you need is an enlarger. As you can see, it's not anything super extraordinarily fancy. It's a Miopta, actually the same one as my first enlarger, maybe a little bit fancier. Uh, you might want to get a grain focuser, but it's optional. It would be good if you have it, but you can get them online, not for very much money. This is a prototype of a super printing easel made by my boyfriend, but I also have my own easels back in Florence. And in the end of this video, I will show you how to make your own easel from cardboard that will save you a lot of money and actually will work much better. Uh, now, you totally need a timer. Technically, of course, you can just switch the light on and off and count Mississippi 1, Mississippi 2. This is not very precise, but it works as well if you cannot find a timer. But timers are pretty inexpensive, even new ones, so I think that you would be able to find something like this. Now, we're approaching trays. And um, here you have this epic three-story construction. If you have more space, that's great. I don't because here comes the door. So we made this uh, wonderful thing where goes the developer and then you pull out the tray and you put your print into stuff and your print into fixture. And then there is one more tray down here for water. And actually this tray, it's better if it's bigger. And as you might have noticed, I have no water in here. Another important thing is the red light. The perfect red light is something like this, but if you cannot drill a hole in your wall, then there is a wonderful alternative. You can find it online on Amazon and it was recommended to me by a workshop participant, uh, Robert Tross, from whom I actually learned a lot. Another thing you need is uh, a good white lamp and I don't say it's something optional. You actually have to have it. Come here. So I have this great IKEA lamp. So it's very good for illuminating your prints because once they're in the fixer you want to see if they're good and sometimes it's not an option to run out of the bathroom, run to the window and come back and look at them. So it's better to have a lamp close by. As you can see, I just somehow attached it and it works. Huh. I have a um, gym over here. <laughs> it's not mine. I don't do sports. Um, anyway, so this is a super basic darkroom setup and this table was also custom made <laughs> for me. But if you do not have this possibility, you can totally just uh, order the top, the tabletop, and buy those like crossed legs. I think you can get them in Ikea or on Amazon, anywhere, is those legs for artists' tables. And uh, in my darkroom in France, actually, that's exactly what I have. I hope this was an informative tour, and last thing, but not least, is how to close your space from light. And as you can see here, there is this bar where I'm gonna hang a light tight curtain. The blackout curtains can be bought on Amazon and you better hang them in two layers, of course. Here it serves two purposes. I don't have ventilation in there, so I can open the door a little bit and have some fresh air. And also, of course, uh, even with the closed door, there is a bit of light leak on the bottom. 
footprint here, so it's gonna cover it up. At the moment of recording the video in Berlin, I did not know I would end up in France, but I did because planes started flying again. So this dark room seems so much more luxurious. It's so spacious. I have two tables. I can even tone my prints here because I have enough space. And most important, I have running water, which is amazing. But if you don't have running water, it's absolutely not a problem. First of all, watch my archival washing video because there I'm explaining all the different methods and strategies how to archivally wash your prints even without water, even in still water in trays and most likely you will need a big tray with a big volume of water to put your prints in there so they soak long enough to get rid of the residual fixer. But not everyone has space also for a giant tray so another option would be a bucket, a simple bucket. If you put your prints face to face, back to back in the bucket and they soak in there, it works no worse than a regular tray. However, you will have to change water several times in this bucket or eventually put your prints under the shower. Here I have this device. Where is this device? <clears throat> this wonderful device that uh, you can clip on the side of your tray so it creates a very nice flow, a very nice flow of uh, running water. This is especially good for RC prints because RC prints you don't have to soak them, you have to actually wash them under running water. So I have not tried it yet because I realized that this sink works extremely well. It has perfect running water and it runs over prints wonderfully. Another thing I wanted to show you here is how to actually use this headlamp because I have it. You don't necessarily have to put it on your head also because it then shines all over the place. I put it like this on my neck and if sometimes I'm dodging and burning and I don't need this red light shining on my paper, I just turn it like this and then you can turn it again and you can direct it with your hands wherever you're looking for a timer, for anything else, for paper. It's super useful to keep it on your neck. And the last thing I wanted to address in this video is drying. As you can see, I do not have really space for drying. I don't even have like clothing racks where you can hang your prints, which is also another method. You put them back to back, you put two, uh, like, how are they called? Pegs, right? You put two pegs on two sides of the print and two, very importantly, on the bottom. And you have to always dry two prints together. If it's one, it will curl. If it's two, they will dry super flat, but you will have the little, um, <laughs> the little dent from the clip. Oh, piranha teeth. <laughs> piranha teeth. You have little piranha teeth on your print, but if you put it afterwards in the frame, I guess it doesn't bother you. You can always chop it off. But a very good method is drying your prints simply face up on a towel, on a clean towel. And I assume that you're not going to be printing in a small dark room something very big. Most likely your prints will be like 8 by 10 inch or maybe a little bit bigger. So they will not really curl that much. And even if they curl, you can always put them under a pile of books for 3-4 days and they will flatten perfectly. Otherwise you can put uh, um, watercolor paper on top and iron them with very hot iron and then put under books as well. So those are the methods of flattening your prints and they will look absolutely perfect. So now the tour is definitely over and I'm off to edit this video and finally upload it. So thank you guys for watching. This will be followed by a little instruction how to make your own easel. And I'm telling you, bye, have fun in the darkroom, have fun setting up your own darkrooms and see you in the next video. Mwah! Bellochka, will you wait? Away. For a basic darkroom setup, you need an enlarger, a 1 liter beaker, a 50 to 100 milliliter cylinder for high dilution chemistry like stop bath, a thermometer, three trays for developers stop and fix, and a bigger water tray where your prints will float while waiting for a final wash a pair of tongs, a 1 or 2 liter storage bottles for chemistry, and a red light. Now, this is a super super basic setup with which you will get prints, 
but of course life gets much better with a few other additions like a timer, grain focuser, extra beakers to never accidentally mess up your chemistry, four print tongs, an easel, and multigrade filters to work with multigrade papers. For this, refer to my split filter printing video to learn how filters work and how to get the best out of your negatives. And finally, an archival washer is always nice, but you can equally well wash your prints in a sink or bathtub. To make an easel, you need a very solid cardboard base. I bought a painter's canvas, very strong self-adhesive magnets, a tape, some extra glue, a ruler, a pencil, a blade, and a mat board, which will be our frame. The inside of the mat board should be smaller than the paper you intend to print on, and outside has to be a bit bigger. First, we have to locate the paper on the base board. We draw around the location of the frame board, then take outside frame length minus length of the paper divided by 2 and measure this distance from the sides. This will be your print area. Now we are cutting the baseboard to glue the magnets in a way that they are the same level with the board. You can also attach the magnets on the other side, but they will likely slide and not work as well either. The top board is taped to the base. The top magnets are easy to attach as they self-locate, reacting to the magnets in the bottom. You can make a little tape tongue for opening the easel. A nice addition would be to spray paint it black and add rubber feet so it doesn't slide on your workspace. However, I usually fix it under the enlarger with masking tape. Now we are moving into the darkroom to see how the easel can be used. What is shown here has to be done under red light only. So you align your future print with clean dry hands to the bottom of the magnets and while holding the paper with one hand, pass the other hand from the top, pressing the paper down. If you do not want to touch the paper with your hands, you can use cotton gloves or a cloth, but I never ever had fingerprint issues. Under red light, it works pretty much the same. Magnets are very well visible. Aligning the print, pressing it down, closing the easel. To align the print to frame your image, you pop a red filter on, easily relocate the frame, and you might want to fix it to the table with a bit of masking tape. After the exposure is done, pull the tongue to easily open the frame, and your print goes to processing. Mm -hmm. 